veganism, Christian, those two things, what should we do? Here we go. I'm just hold her the whole time. Hey, we are broadcasting. Tell the people everything you know about veganism and Christianness. Uh oh, maybe I should have checked her diaper. I was once a raw vegan person. For six months, I was a raw vegan, which means you don't eat any cooked food, you don't eat any vegetarian food. There's just nothing created by an animal that you're putting in your mouth and eating. It's, it's more healthy for you. It made me feel a lot better during the day. I didn't drink coffee either. I mean, I believed in it, and a lot of people did at the, you know, the time that I did that. It was like 2014, I think. Yeah, I was not eating processed foods at all. I had quit smoking. I was still doing Adderall a little bit, but I quit doing that too. I mean, I was just quitting a lot of things, and I just, I needed to do something radical, and that was it. It's a good thing for the time to be a vegan, but I, as you read the Bible, that's the problem I started to have. The Bible was saying things like how <laughs> King, King Saul's here, let's, Samuel had them slaughter a fattened calf for them to eat. Samuel, a man who sees from God, he's, I mean, he's, he's in touch with God. If God doesn't want humanity to do something, Samuel would know it. And here he is saying, slaughter that fattened calf. We have a king here. Let's eat meat, <laughs> right? To, to like commemorate, to celebrate all this stuff for this new king. I'm gonna start in Genesis for a second and just kind of briefly go over some scriptures. Chapter one of Genesis, verse 24. Then God said, let the earth produce every sort of animal, each producing offspring of the same kind. And this is the NLT version of the Bible, NLT. Livestock small animals that scurry along the ground and wild animals and that is what happened okay define livestock livestock means farm animals regarded as an asset farm animals regarded as an asset <laughs> so if you're making money off a of livestock and it's it's not food i guess livestock as an asset you can plow the ground with like an oxen, but just looking at the definition of livestock, it looks like they were talking about farm animals regarded as an asset. That's all I'm going to say about that. Verse 29, then God said, look, I've given you every seed bearing plant throughout the earth and all the fruit trees for your food. And I have given every green plant as food for all the wild animals, the birds in the sky and the small animals that scurry along the ground, everything that has life. And that is what happened. And I think a lot of Christian vegans like to quote this verse and say, see, it was God's original design. But the problem with that is, is it doesn't say, see, that's God's original design in the text. It just, people add that to this verse right here. They add on and say, well, God only wanted people to eat vegetables, you know, or plants, seed bearing plants, every green thing, all the animals. That's the original design. But that's not what it says. It doesn't say it was the original design. Just people tack that on. Genesis 9, verse 2. All, all the animals of the earth. And this is after Eve ate the fruit and the fall of mankind, and the horrible curse of work <laughs> happened. This is after that. Genesis chapter 9, verse 2 says, All the animals of the earth, all the birds of the sky, all the small animals that scurry along the ground, and all the fish in the sea will look on you with fear and terror. I have placed them in your power. 
I have given them to you for food, just as I have given you grain and vegetables, but you must never eat any meat that still has the lifeblood in it. Okay, so what changed? Well, obviously the fall of man happened. Yes, it's after the flood. The flood has happened, and now God's saying, there's certain animals you can eat. I've given them to you for food, just as I've given you grain and vegetables. So is this the beginning of God saying, it's okay to eat meat? My problem is, is that I feel like some of the vegan Christians that I've encountered on the internet, they cut out all the rest of the Bible and just take that first scripture in Genesis chapter one and say, well, everybody, you know, it was the original design. Well, I think also the fall of man is something that God knew about before the fall of man. You know, Eve eating the fruit and Adam eating the fruit. I think God knew that that was going to happen. It was like a rhetorical question. And so you can't say that God didn't know that we were going to ever eat animals. There's many, many other scriptures about how God's okay with us eating meat. The tabernacle in with the Israelites, Moses, the tabernacle was like the place where there was the Holy of Holies, you know, there was that separate room and then there was the outer court and then where, you know, the Levites could hang out and Aaron and his sons and lineage could, could uh, attend. And then there was the outer, like everything about that tabernacle was made with goats or like um, animal skins and fur, the tabernacle. And that was on upon God's command. So why would a vegan God with the original design that we should only eat vegetables be saying that he wants his church to be made of animal furs? I mean, they had to slaughter those animals and, or maybe they ate them, whatever. But to me, that just sends a signal that it's okay for us to eat meat from God. And if that doesn't seal the deal, then the slaughtering of the fattened calf for Saul or um, the manna that fell from heaven. I know that you can debate any of these points and say, well, you know, the people, the people forced God to give them manna and he relented in like reluctance or something. What I'm saying here is that throughout the Bible, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, it's just thick, thick with people of God eating meat. I mean, it just doesn't stop. And, and there are many, many parts in the Bible that say that, you know, there's people of God eating meat. So fast forward to Jesus making fish for people on the beach for the disciples. He, he was cooking some fish for them. What was he thinking? Jesus, don't you know that, don't you know that the original design was for us to not eat meat? We were supposed to eat plants? Jesus, the God, God incarnate to humankind is cooking fish on the beach for his disciples. What are you doing, Jesus? What are you doing? Stop that. You're supposed to be vegan. Okay. Okay. So the Bible says that it's okay to eat meat, right? It's, it's kosher. <laughs> and people did it all throughout the Bible. Okay. Great. So we can eat meat. Yes. Yeah. There should be no reason that we shouldn't. I want to show you this screenshot here. The righteous care for the needs of their animals, but the kindest acts of the wicked are cruel. Proverbs 12, 10, I feel like that can speak to factory farming. It's all the people that live around these factory farms are getting like poisoned and sick and they have maggots in their stool. And it's, it's, not, it's not loving thy neighbor, really. If you're a neighbor of that farm, those people are, are operating in what I believe to be the the acts of the wicked being cruel the kindest acts of the wicked are cruel that being said i feel like also meat these days there's so many things in it that can give you cancer or something you know like fish have the mercury in it and you're getting poisoned when you're eating that 
even though it has like great things in it like DHAs and stuff. But I mean, mercury poisoning, that's a thing. Meat. People are getting cancer from eating meat and all the stuff that they pump into meat that wasn't originally there, like in the Bible, scares me. So that's why I'm predominantly vegan. That's why I want to be vegan. And I mean, I do eat meat. It's kind of confusing. It's all based on the Bible. Like, I feel like it's okay to eat meat, and I will. The holidays is the time of year to celebrate with meat, <laughs> and I'll probably do that. But the rest of the year, I'm going to be vegan. <laughs>